Eve Echoes is an incredibly complicated game. This makes it not fun for some people, but usually makes it more fun for those that know all of its secrets. So in this video, I have 79 more advanced tips for you. One of the most annoying things about Eve Echoes is the cooldown audits when transferring items. But a lot of people don't realize that these can be completely avoided. So in the future, when you see that there is an audit on a contract, hit the X and then scroll down to add item, then search for a valuable stackable item that the person you are trading with has in their item hanger. They will have to make sure that they have a stack in their item hanger that is the exact same number as the one that you have selected. But if they do, then it will end up trading the items. My personal favorite item to choose is the Sintus Large Laser because I can't really sell them for anything right now, but any valuable stackable item will do. After selecting an amount that you think is comparable, click next to see the change on the audit. If this says recipient, then they will still get an audit. And if it says creator, then you will have an audit. So the ideal is for it to say nothing up here, in which case neither of you will receive an audit. Then after they accept the contract, you can divide up those items and send it back to them. Ideally, you'd be able to do this through the corporation hanger as it is faster and cheaper. But if you are not in the same corporation, dividing them up into multiple contracts will still reduce the audit time to very little and sometimes nothing. When you are fitting a new ship or even just adjusting a ship, it is often best to strip the fittings and then click fit to active ship until everything is equipped. This is often easier because you can do it from any storage facility facility like corporation hangers, other ships, and so on and so forth. After fitting that ship, you can hold and drag different items to stack them. This will activate all of those items in conjunction. I do not recommend putting all of your guns in one stack, but two or three should be enough to allow all of your modules to be on one screen. If a module says that there is a penalty for using more than one of that type of module, then the second one is 13% less effective, the third one is 43% less effective, the fourth one is 72% less effective, and the fifth one is 89% less effective. This is true for rigs and modules in all categories, but only if that rig or module says that there is a penalty. Some do not have any penalty, some modules allow you to use only one of that type of item, and some modules are only allowed on certain types of ships. I mentioned in my mining video that reduction rigs are calculated additively and therefore overpower this penalty, but that has either been fixed or I somehow made a miscalculation because that is no longer true. Every time you get a kill with a ship, it adds a little kill mark on the side of your ship. When you hit 10 kills, those 10 kill marks get replaced with a bigger kill mark. You can see here on this ship that I have exactly 10 kills. These marks are permanently attached to your ship and are not transferable, so they will disappear if the ship gets destroyed or repackaged. In my last tips and tricks video, I described the perfect transport that is essentially untouchable until interdictor spheres are added to the game but I did not mention that the Imacus has an 8% cargo hull capacity rather than a 5%, making it the best out of those four options for those that have decent frigate skills. All ships of all factions have the same resistance profiles for shields, but they do not have the same resistance profiles for armor. Minmatar ships have 10% more EM resistance than anyone else. Kaldari have 10% more thermal resistance than everyone else. Galente has 10% more kinetic resistance than everyone else. And Amar has 10% more explosive resistance than everyone else. When dealing with only natural resistances for shield, armor, and structure, EM resistance is the rarest of the four. And thermal resistance is the second rarest, making lasers the strongest weapon type against an average of all ships. A lot of people realize that you have to align to a location before you start warping, but most don't realize that you also need to achieve 75% of your maximum velocity. Because of this, having your afterburner active actually makes you warp slower, and webbing someone actually makes them warp faster. So if you need to warp instantly, you need to make sure that you are both aligned and traveling at 75% of your max speed. Everyone knows that you need to specialize, but few know exactly how much. To put things in perspective, even 
even if you have double omega and all three skill chips, it would take five years to max out the clone section and 13 years to max out the ship section. And the devs are going to be adding more skills, so likely that will exceed 20 years with future updates. Now they do plan to add the option to reallocate your skill points in the future, but that will require using Plex, which of course costs money or time. On that note, it is important to keep in mind that smaller ships and smaller weapons require a lot less skill points. So if you wanna get proficient at something quickly, smaller is better. And then some skills give very different benefits based on what level you're at. For example, the ship defense upgrade skills boost shields more than anything else until level five, which means lower levels favor shield tanking. If you have any more questions about skill points, one of the research team members created a sheet listing the requirements of every skill in the game. And I have put a link to that in the pinned comment of this video. If you find a valuable asteroid at the edge of a belt and position yourself at a distance in which it is the only asteroid you can mine, then your strip miners will mine only that resource, allowing you to capitalize on the tripled mining speed of strip miners without the penalty of not being able to choose the resource you are mining. Double clicking somewhere in space allows you to manually pilot your ship. This is incredibly helpful for cutting someone off that is orbiting an ally or getting away from someone that has points on you. Never skip scout and inquisitor anomalies because even level one can give you very valuable blueprints and the lower the level, the faster you can clear them. And lastly, if you're getting outranged by a drone boat, make sure to target and destroy their drones. Well, that's it guys. I have five videos dedicated to this game and I have put a ton of research and work into each one of them. Altogether, they cover 80% of this incredibly vast game, instantly advancing beginners to intermediate players and even some to advanced if they have enough experience in the game. If you like these videos, please share them with your corporations so that they can help as many people as possible. There are a few other subjects that I would love to cover on this game and I know the devs have plans to add quite a bit more to the game. So if these videos get enough views, I will definitely make more. But I am going to be taking a break just for a little bit because the devs of a game that I have been waiting for for over three years just announced that they are going to go global sometime in the next couple weeks. And I really wanna do a good job of covering that game. I will still keep covering Eve Echoes on my gameplay channel, which I've already done some really awesome episodes, like when we destroyed a space station or when I put a large afterburner on my Phantasm to get over 2,500 meters per second. But I have even more planned, including an entire series that I have been recording secretly and will start releasing Releasing around the time you guys are watching this video. So I am not quitting Eve Echoes personally, but I will be spending more time on this channel to cover that other game for a while. The game is called Frostborn, and you guys are welcome to join me playing both games because it is truly an awesome game. But I will be honest that other than both being survival games, the two games are not very similar. Then again, I like both games, so maybe you guys will too. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.